Allahu Akbar. Welcome to our audience that is viewing from home during this lockdown. Um, my name is Kashmir Maryam and this is my sister Aisha. Aisha, would you like to introduce yourself and what we do as the Strangers Organization? Yes. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Bismillahi wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, my name is Aisha and I am part of an organization called The Strangers and our goal is to revive the message of Islam and we do this through uh, different different means. One of the means is through spoken word poetry, through the collective voice of Muslim poets around the world um, and just being able to clear up misconceptions. So that's our main goal. Um, yes, Kash. Yeah, excellent. Jazakallah khair. Uh, so the work that we do as the strangers is we host a lot of uh, poetry slams. A lot of the time they're, um, you know, in person. And so we have our poets go up on stage. They compete for trophies um, and prizes. And we just have a good time. It's basically to platform the Muslim voice so that we can portray the true message of Islam through the art of spoken word poetry. Um, so it's a creative art, it's something that is uh, powerful and empowering. Um, and that's what we wanted to do for you today. So we have a great show lined up for you all. Um, we hope that you enjoy watching. Um, and I just wanted to clarify a few things that are a little bit different about uh, slam poetry uh, versus written poetry or any other type of poetry, Shakespeare, whatever, you, whatever type of poetry you are into. Um, so the difference between slam poetry is that it is um, about the content of the poem. So how deep is the lyrical content? How, um, how relevant is it to the audience? How, how powerful is the, the, the methods that are used to articulate what is being said in the poem? And second of all, um, the, the powerful thing about slam poetry and probably one of the more important traits of slam poetry is that it is heavily about the way in which the message is revealed to the audience. So it's not just about reading from a sheet of paper, it's about how that message is delivered. Um, so that's something that we put a lot of emphasis on as The Strangers, and we do uh, with all of our poets as well. So inshallah, today you'll be hearing some slam poetry, and um, I hope that you enjoy the show and all of the poets that we have lined up. Uh, there are three simple rules that we have for the poets. That is number one, the content has to be um, appropriate, so no curse words. Um, uh, there, there is no inappropriate content, um, and our poets do understand that. The second rule is that uh, we have to make sure that the poem is under five minutes. Um, and number three is just to be respectful of everyone that is up there performing. Everyone is sharing something that is meaningful to them, and that's something very personal, and we have to respect that because that's very sanctified. Um, so yeah, so without any further ado, I would like to introduce our judge for this evening. Her name is Tahani Salah. Is Tahani there? I'm here. As Assalamu alaikum, Tahani. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah, we're doing good. Perfect. So I have Tahani your bio here. I'm just going to read it. And um, hopefully that will explain to everyone your background in poetry. I personally, I know Tahani from before. Um, she's a slam poet. So she knows a thing or two, or more than a thing or two about performance. And that's one of the reasons we chose to have her on our platform today. Um, and that's something that means a lot to us because I think to be a writer is one thing, but to be a performer is something, um, is something else. So, uh, Jazakallah her for joining us today. Thank so, you. Tahani Salah is an educator, poet, and activist based in Brooklyn, New York, with a bloodline to Palestine. She's a graduate of Columbia University, a former professor of curriculum development at the Cooney Graduate Center. She's also a member of the New York Rican Slam team. She competed internationally and holds many slam titles from Europe to Africa. Tani has also been featured on HBO's Deaf Poetry Jam. She is a passionate about peace and activism and carries that into the classroom as an educator, showing how life creates art and using it all as a tool of expression. As an artist dedicated to bringing light and solutions to communities where people's voices have been silenced, Tahani has performed at a number of world famous stages, including the Apollo Theater in New York City, to universities in the US, South Africa, Germany, Canada, Palestine, Jordan, and many more. <laughs> Mashallah. Okay, so Tahani, you told me to pick one or two lines from your bio, but I felt like everyone needed to hear that. Um, so welcome. 
without any further ado, I would like to bring on our first performer for this evening. Um, so now I'm actually going to switch over to my co MC Aisha, uh, who is actually my blood sister as well. Um, so Aisha, I'm gonna <laughs> switch over to you and you're gonna start introducing the, the first half of the poets and um, yeah, passing it straight on to you. Jazakallah khair. So, um, the first half of the poets are actually international poets, meaning um, because we opened up the stream, uh, the pool of poets who submitted their poetry were much more diverse. Uh, the content was extremely heavy. It was very difficult to make certain choices. So the first set of poets actually, like I said, international poets. We have people, they're going to tell you themselves, but we have people from all over the world. We have people from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka. We have people from London, um, England, our hometown, mine and my sister Kashmir's, uh, before we moved to New York. And we have people from so many other amazing places. So without further ado, we'll introduce the first person who's going to tell you a little bit more about themselves. And the first person is Sister Sharika. So please speak. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I'm Sharika Hafiz from Sri Lanka. For those of you who don't know, Sri Lanka is this really tiny island shaped like a teardrop falling off the southern end of India. I've been writing poetry for since I was really young, when I was, when I was a little girl, I used to write about things that were closest to me, like home, nostalgia, and growing up. But then as I got older, I realized that I wanted to address issues that were in a, in a broader, in a global scale, things that people don't usually talk about, the problems of the world. Um, and the piece that I would like to, I would like to present today at this slam is um, is relevant to what we are going through right now. All of us, the lockdowns and the fear that is going through all of us. So I think, I hope this would um, serve as a reminder to us all to what, at, at a moment like this, what um, kind of things, the people we should give priorities to, the people without whom we wouldn't be, we would, the society wouldn't be running. Um, so yeah, can I start? Yes, please start. What we must remember. What we must remember in a few years from now is how our unskilled workers kept society functioning when our sincere politicians had nothing to offer but empty promises and colorful words. What we must remember is how other doctors and nurses kept society functioning. They were the, f f the fighters at the forefront of it all. How other cashiers and janitors and package handlers were what kept us from falling apart as a society confined to the walls of our houses. What we must remember is how we people, ordinary and unremarkable, came together from across the world to share in the grief that had gripped us. And how we sang in our balconies, dancing to the beautiful chaos of pianos and flutes of our amateur neighbors. What we must remember is how our leaders had been playing us all along when they told us, when they convinced us that universal health care was an impossibility. How online classes or jobs were ineffective or impractical, even if you were differently abled. Remember, remember you're being lied to if the world tries to go back to what it was with convincing excuses that we now know are no excuses at all. Jazakallah, Katir. I hope you enjoy that. Jazakallah, hey sister. Beautiful, beautiful reminder. Kashmir? Yes, that was phenomenal. Jazakallah for sharing. And I like the fact that your poem is so relevant to everything that is happening right now, because I don't think that a lot of people appreciate what it's like to be on the front lines, especially 
you know, unless they are themselves in the healthcare field and they have worked as a nurse or a doctor or, or in any healthcare profession there, um, you know, I think that it's amazing that you highlighted that. So Jazakallah khair. And how long have you been writing, sister? I think since when I was 11 years old, I used to write short stories and anything before that, but poetry was, yeah, when I was 11 years old. Yeah, well, we are so happy that you sister. joined us all the way from Sri Lanka. Yes, alhamdulillah. And also, um, sister, I heard some clicking in the background. Did I, am I was I hearing things or was someone actually clicking? Uh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, just for our audience, um, just to let you know, uh, in slam poetry, if someone really, really is um, enjoying a piece, uh, they don't normally clap their hands so much because then it can distract the uh, performer. They click. So if you're enjoying it, even if you're at home, don't forget to click. That's why I was like, nice. <laughs> Okay, sure. <laughs> I, was going, I was going to, and I was like, I'm not sure if this is the platform for it. Let me use back when someone starts. This, this is the platform for it. I want to thank everyone here. I want to thank primarily um, for hosting us on their platform every single year when we host this. It's just an amazing success, and I can say, Alhamdulillah, from the bottom of my heart, I think this was phenomenally successful. So, Jazakallah Khair. I want to say a special Jazakallah Khair to uh, Tahani for doing this we're doing the very very difficult job of judging it can never be okay. Thank you so much. And may Allah reward you and um mm -hmm. and uh, you know for taking the time out you're also a mother so you know it, I know it's difficult juggling uh duties so you may Allah reward you for that and um, yeah do you have any closing remarks Aisha um, I just wanted to say that um, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless all of the viewers for attending. Um, I pray that we all benefited from an event without our poets. Um, now, saying that as well, um, I'm not sure if you can see me. Okay, you could see me now. Um, no further ado. Uh, you can find the strangers on Instagram. Our website is in the works, inshallah. So please do uh, definitely follow up with more information about the Uyghur campaign, uh, which is a current campaign that we're doing. We hope you enjoyed the letter, the final compilation. Um, a lot of heart went into it from our poets. And thank you again to everyone. And of course, Assistant Tahani, you did an amazing job. Jazakul Khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And Ikna. Of course, Ikna. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, I just want to say the greatest thank you to all of our poets for contributing their pieces. Each one was mind blowing and touched my heart. And I'm sincerely saying that as someone who's been to a lot of poetry slams and a lot of poetry over the years, as Tahani and as Aisha can both attest to, we had an amazing level of talent tonight. Um, so may Allah reward you all. And yeah, I'm going to close it right there. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.